All right. Good morning, everyone. Good morning for me, Burris. Some of the good afternoon for everyone. Or how I like to say it, my in other uh, podcast and uh, show is a good morning, good evening, good day, good afternoon. Because you never know where your audience is speaking. And I'm really excited to speak today uh, on this online event. And I think this is fantastic that uh, we have this like initiative to do have live event for 24 hours with uh, awesome speakers uh, line up. All right, so uh, my name is Victor Gamov. I work as a developer advocate at uh, Confluent. Uh, Confluent is a company that builds a, a distribution of uh, Apache Kafka. We call it Confluent Platform. And uh, Confluent is very active in the Apache Kafka community. We contribute a lot of the core Kafka and uh, different tools around this. And uh, the part of the things that I do at Confluent, I speak with developers. Uh, sometimes I like to call myself the person who builds highly scalable and highly available Hello World applications. Um, and uh, I like to talk to developers. I like to get the feedback. So I'm really excited to have a this uh, stage to uh, send my message and probably we'll start a conversation. So I'm uh, really um, excited to hear all your questions today. Um, for your convenience, if you would like to contact me before or after or during this presentation, you can use my Twitter handle, which conveniently placed on every slide down below so you would know uh, where we are and use this hashtag uh, Spring Life if you want to tell a particular event. Also, follow Confluent if you are in this uh, Kafka and streaming platform type of jazz. Also, I would like to use this opportunity to say thanks to my colleagues, Gwen Shapiro and Nematis. Uh, Sachs at Confluent, uh, who helped to contribute to this talk and uh, shared some of their ideas. Um, as always, um, I'm, as a developer advocate, I'm blessed to work with the people who are much smarter than me. Um, so that's why I also learn and share their wisdom with the rest of the community. Okay, so the brief agenda for today's presentation. I would like to introduce you to uh, Kafka Streams. What is that? Like why it is important and why I'm always exciting to talk about this. Uh, how uh, how we can scale? What's the what's the foundation or the uh, fundamentals of scaling Kafka Streams applications? Um, I will briefly, for those of you who don't know Kubernetes, I will spend a few minutes to uh, bring you up to speed to the point where which components of Kubernetes are are important for this particular talk. Uh, and uh, we will talk a little bit about some of the recommendations and how to run stateful or stateless uh, stream processing applications on, on, on Kubernetes. All right, so um, you can find uh, the code for this presentation in a repository that we call demo scene. There's also like very big number of different uh, uh, examples. And one of the examples that I like to use in my presentation and I build all my demo around this concept of um, a streaming movie demo. Um, huge uh, movie buff, love movies and the love like uh, all things around this. And I was thinking that to have demo that will allow uh, me to demonstrate some of the real time um, movie ratings processing. We're gonna be seeing this demo later today uh, if time permits, but uh, hopefully there's gonna be, uh, there's gonna be time for showing this presentation uh, to show this demo. So, um, Apache Kafka is a distributed event streaming platform that allows you to um, run and push the messages through this uh, platform uh, with, uh, first of all, incredible amounts and incredible speeds. Uh, Apache Kafka used by a uh, large variety of modern um, startups and enterprises and all sorts of uh, companies who are doing uh, data processing and um, uh, who are doing any type of data these days. And basically, um, today in 2020, uh, it is pretty much every company that have something to do with data. They need to process data. They need to push data around. So they will use uh, Kafka at some, at some capacity. Kafka Streams is a, a library, a framework that comes with Apache Kafka. Uh, it is a uh, framework that you use to write your applications. And this framework is uh, pretty much everything that you need in, in order to uh, perform stream processing. What's the stream processing? Stream processing is a, a procedure or, or tool set or um, certain operations that you perform on um, on messages or on events as they flow. So you don't need to wait and accumulate these messages in order to uh, perform calculation. 
how we did this in the past in the batch processing uh, in the batch processing world uh, with stream processing you process message as they go so in this case a framework uh, should be quite rich in order to support not only uh, uh, stateless stream processing stateless stream processing is like a mapping or filtering like okay, changing the, the transforming on the fly or the message but also providing stateful uh, stream processing capabilities for example doing aggregation due to running over just accounts and all sorts of things that's required Required in order to calculate current step of a particular computation, you need to have uh, knowledge of the past, knowledge of the previous step. So in this case, you can go um, have this uh, stored somewhere, and after that, when the time comes, when the match comes, that needs to be um, this state needs to be changed. So Kafka Streams has this, and um, it is. Um, has a few flavors in terms of API. It has a high level API that very, um, uh, we, we call it uh, Fluent API or DSL API. That is a uh, very much, if you're Java developer, it's Kafka Streams, it's Java framework, or if you any type of GVM developer, you should be able to use it like a quite, uh, quite easy. So um, it will remind you a lot of uh, how Java, um, Java Util uh, streams, uh, are working so the so a lot of API choices are highly inspired from this kind of like a functional approach of defining your data pipelines. <clears throat> now, um, the Kafka streams and in general applications that dealing with your uh, with your data um, that comes into Kafka uh, generally work with with Kafka. So in order to work this, you don't need to have any external databases. You don't have, uh, you don't need to anything. So your application will use Kafka not only as a source of data, but also as a sort, as a, as a, as a storage to store some of the intermediate uh, data, for example, information about, uh, I will talk about this. Now you can ask me, Victor, how I can bring the data from my Oracle database uh, into this play if I want to do processing. Do I need to write my application to read this data from Oracle and bring this data into, into Kafka? So the answer for this question is not necessarily, and you shouldn't do this because uh, Kafka, Apache Kafka uh, event streaming platform actually has a runtime called Kafka Connect. Um, uh, think about this as a kind of like um, a framework that manages all uh, connectors lifecycle and your connector is actually implements logic of um, the retrieving data from particular source and put this data into Kafka. Same thing, connectors available on um, not only for consumed data, but also uh, uh, produce data to external systems. So imagine this use case, you, you're doing um, some, um, some migration from some legacy system. You have a like DB2 connector um, that have all your online uh, transactions. So you need to bring this data somewhere um, because your some, some of the, the master, must, some, some, of the, some of the information that required to enrich your transaction available in different database. So uh, using connector to connect to mainframe through DB2, uh, push the data into Kafka. You use a connector to connect to Oracle database to push their data uh, into Kafka using Kafka streams to join these two streams together in order to produce um, enriched data. And after that, uh, use another connector to fill your um, elastic search and you can build different dashboards based on this information. So um, with Kafka Connect and Kafka streams and another um, tool that I'm again not gonna talk about much today, with key SQL DB, you will be able to build uh, uh, modern uh, distributed data pipelines quite quite easily. Uh, you can find information about connectors on Connector Hub, which is Confluent.io slash hub. You will find like over 100 different connectors to different systems. So um, it's it's quite extensive. So let's uh, drill down into the Kafka stream um, <clears throat> Kafka streams aspects. So um, as I mentioned, Kafka streams um, application um, and uh, it's a, it's a Java framework or JVM framework. There's a Scala bindings, there's a Java bindings, there's examples in the repository that I mentioned in uh, in Kotlin. I'm, I'm wearing my Kotlin t-shirt because I just running out of clean t-shirts today. Uh, usually I wear my Kafka t-shirts. Um, so in, in this particular case, uh, we do have um, similar uh, approach to um, Java Util streams. So first, First thing, we're creating a stream, which is abstraction on top of Kafka topic. This abstraction allows us to um, provide certain methods that we can do in order to modify a particular stream. 
Um, with um, <clears throat> when the messages are coming in a, in a stream where you don't know where these messages will end, um, you need to find the way uh, how you can do some like intermediate calculations. So one of the approach here is to using the windows or time windows. You can define a window for a particular duration, say like in this particular case, we define a window of um, of five seconds that will be advanced by each uh, every second. And in this particular case, this window creates another dimension to our um, to our data. So first of all, we have a string of some of the stocks that 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 are coming into um, into Kafka. So we're grouping the streams uh, the stream by keys, and that will generate this group stream. Um, and this uh, key will be first dimension. And the time aspect here, like window, uh, it creates another dimension for for our stream. For and for the next uh, operation, uh, we can. Uh, perform aggregation where we need to provide a uh, function that will define what kind of aggregation we're trying to do. Also, we need to instantiate um, uh, a store where we're going to be storing this information uh, in, in intermediate. So in this particular case, uh, uh, trade stats is going to be our store where we'll be uh, storing our um, the particular um, particular trade for for this particular time window. Uh, we also need to specify a, um, a serializer, deserializer, because um, in, in Java we're dealing with objects, but once we live in JVM, uh, we need to uh, transform Java object into stream of bytes. So uh, we need to provide this um, uh, um, serializer. And also we can uh, create a local uh, local state, which is going to be a key value store uh, that also queryable. So your application also not only becomes a, um, um, like a computational unit, but also uh, it can serve this data as a key value database. Um, and once we perform this uh, aggregation for uh, for these trades, uh, we can also save a result of, of this into Kafka topic. So for this one, um, we uh, we need to uh, calculate this um, price average, and after that, we will uh, save these stats to particular uh, topic. So um, essentially, the workflow of Kafka Streams is uh, like an infinite um, application that runs uh, in background. Usually, you don't necessarily even need to have UI for this application. Think about it, it's like a daemon that will be running, listening to data from input topic and uh, doing some computation and pushes data to output topic. So if you need to send this to another system, um, you're using connector. Uh, if you need to read data from another system, you also use using connector. You're not, you're not putting this logic into um, in the Kafka Streams application. Now, so let's uh, re let's drill down into this um, the f foundational um, component of Kafka Streams application. This thing called topology. So topology, if you um, have been in a data processing world. Um, or touched any data processing framework from the last like five years, uh, you probably uh, will be uh, familiar with this concept of called uh, direct acyclic graph. So uh, this graph is defines a um, uh, essentially flow from end to beginning, and uh, this graph has beginning and end. It doesn't have uh, uh, cycles in it, so there's no loops. Uh, you cannot go back. You only go in from beginning to the uh, to the end. So that's why uh, this uh, uh, mathematical concept was used to model a uh, majority of the modern distributed um, processing systems. Now, each um, each operation uh, in our RPI call will be represented by a certain step in topology. There are three three distinct the three distinct nodes that you might have in this graph. First one, source, meaning that um, this data coming from somewhere. So source usually um, doesn't have any inputs; uh, it have only output. So uh, in this particular case, uh, in case of Kafka streams, uh, it is always reading data from Kafka topic. There is a processor node where actually a certain uh, logic will be implemented. So you get something, some data from source, and after that you push this individual message through individual um, um, nodes of this topology. And once you're done processing, you can define the sync node. So what's going to be your final and uh, uh, final destination? So this sync node would be uh, very similar how you have uh, this like a terminal operations in uh, uh, Java Util streams when you kind of 
like finally evaluate because you define your workflow and after you, you do like an evaluation and after that your data will be um, uh, materialized in, 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 in memory. In this particular case, when you do sync node, it actually will land into a particular Kafka topic. Now, from, um, from perspective of um, uh, API and how it works, essentially this um, on the left side thing that I have this uh, API calls like a stream, use, uh, the get uh, group by ID, window by aggregate and map values and all these APIs will be uh, translated in certain, um, in certain nodes. <clears throat> Another interesting thing that I mentioned in the very beginning, there is two types of stream processing. There is a stream processing that um, is uh, stateless. So all sorts of operation when you just need to simple filter, they don't need to have a state. You don't need to remember what happened on this particular step. But once you start doing more or less complex real world application that will require you to do some sort of um, aggregations and uh, will perform a sort of like a grouping and all sorts of things, those operations require state to be stored somewhere. So Kafka, um, Kafka Streams provides you the ways how you can use this. So that's why one of the um, processor nodes might be initiate state store that can be reused in a different nodes of this topology. So uh, if you think here, if you see here in this particular, uh, in this particular example, when I am uh, creating this group, um, group by key call, um, uh, in, in, in uh, essentially it's not, uh, group by key and aggregate, we're creating the state store where um, we're storing this information for um, further processing. So how do we scale? Um, in um, Kafka, Kafka Streams is a, is a framework that native to Apache Kafka. So that's why it's, it's built on top of the, the uh, concepts that are fundamental for Apache Kafka. In this particular case, um, Kafka Streams uh, follows similar ideas that were placed into uh, Kafka consumer groups and Kafka Streams um, application scales by number of uh, partitions of input topic. So say we have a topic that has four partitions. So for each partition, Kafka Stream application will create a um, four tasks. So each individual task uh, will include instance of this topology. So when you're writing your application, you actually are uh, defining a blueprint of topology. When you submit this uh, topology, this topology becomes a runnable execute, uh, a runnable uh, piece of uh, executable code that will be executed in this so-called task. So this is a um, this is Kafka Streams take on uh, parallelism. Some of the frameworks using the similar approach. Uh, some of the developers might know this as a kind of like a green thread. So it's not necessarily going to be um, mapping to actual physical threads. Uh, those task is um, those tasks are uh the the way how uh internal uh, the parallelization works in in the kafka streams so for each individual partition uh we will create instance of this topology and the cool thing is this uh, there's no um there would be no uh need to having logs or whatnot because for a particular partition will have only one instance of the task and this task will be serving only one partition so um you might have one application that runs multiple tasks but this those tasks Tasks, they will not affect each other. Um, you don't need to have any, uh, you know, locking or concurrency control. Everything uh, designed to be um, depend on, not on this kind of like a locking mechanism and so, and so far and so on. But uh, task can be executed on actual physical threads. Uh, those threads can be defined in configuration and based on number of uh, processors, based on number um, uh, processors on your machine, you might have uh, different uh, uh, kind of like a scalability uh, characteristics. Um, and as a result, uh, a result topic should have a same uh, number partition that will create certain condition for, for this case. Like if you want to scale your application, you definitely don't want to start your or create your topic, just one partition. So in this case, you limit yourself with only one instance of Kafka, to, uh, Kafka streams. Um, and each individual task and individual topology instance will have its own instance uh, of uh, state store based on particular key. So they will land on uh, based on partition. 
So how does it work uh, if we need to scale this? When we start one application, we have one Kafka topic. In this case, Kafka Streams will create uh, four tasks uh, inside one application. And uh, we'll see this in uh, in example, how you can um, how we can monitor monitor this. Now, and uh, you can start another instance of your application uh, that will start clean with, without any state. Um, once, <clears throat> once we uh, start this application and application join this uh, um, the consumer group, um, some of the partitions will be migrated uh, to be handled by second instance of this application. And um, in this case, we will scale this load equally. Um, the state store will be initiated on uh, second application and uh, the way how um, Kafka streams like second instance of Kafka streams application would know about this um, it will use uh, Kafka to replicate the store through so um, same thing for same thing for another application um, and you, you might notice this on the first application and on the first uh, side of over here it's not like artifact that i forgot to remove this stuff so you can uh, still have uh, or you can keep this uh, state stores um, on instances of the first applications even though they are not uh, used for particular task in this uh, in this scenario but in uh, when we need to do uh, fault tolerance uh, or like uh, the failure uh, and recovery, uh, which I will be talking about next slide, uh, those stuff would be useful. So what's going to happen if one of the instances of application will go down? So in this case, uh, the process of the rebalancing will kick in. The same process of rebalancing that happens uh, during the new application will join. Same so happens when the one application will go down. So, um, and uh, the tasks that were uh, running in this application will be distributed across instances of that application as well. Now, um, the state store, what's gonna happen with state store? So state store uh, will be uh, replicated and let's talk about how this will uh, happen. In, uh, Kafka, uh, in Kafka streams, um, we use Kafka as our, not only our source of data, but also uh, um, the system that allows us to uh, provide replication for those uh, state stores. So we have a, our input topic, our messages goes to this topic. We are um, doing some sort of like aggregation. So we're updating a uh, local, uh, local state um, and uh, we're writing result to state store. But this uh, updates that happened on the local state store will be replicated through so-called change log topic that will be created on the Kafka side of things. So this is how um, we uh, not only um, not only using Kafka for you know re reading data, but also using data to, uh, using Kafka to um, replicate our changes. So let's take a look how does it work. Uh, in change log topic, we'll have the same number of uh, partitions uh, for um, uh, for state store because you need to replicate changes from each individual uh, state store into um, another site. So where you want to have this in uh, in other instance of your application. So this is how it happens. So uh, in change log topic, we'll capture all the changes uh, from one place. Once we start another application, it, it, this application will rehydrate internal. Um, a state store from this change log topic. So in this case, you don't need to um, rehydrate your application. Like when you start new application, you don't need to um, uh, start very clean and uh, reprocess all these messages in order to update it. So you will get the delta or like effective result um, that stored in this uh, state store. So in terms of recovery uh, time, some of the characteristics that you uh, as developer uh, need to know. The change log topic are uh, compacted, meaning that we don't have full history, uh, meaning that uh, we're only storing only latest and greatest value for a particular key. So say uh, we're using change log topic to capture accounts for a particular movie ID or a particular, so in this case, we always will have, uh, we have three movies, we count this and we only will store uh, movie ID equals three, like, or like movie ID count equals three. We don't need to remember whole history that in the past, when there was a two movies count was two, or when there was only one movie count was one. So it's always latest and greatest, and this will be uh, constantly um, overwritten. Now, the uh, change log topic uh, um, also can be 
grew very fast, depend on your state store. Um, and a larger state store implies uh, um, longer recovery time. And you can, you can feel this like uh, naturally that simply because this data needs to be replicated across uh, multiple instances of this application. So, uh, and um, there are some configurations that you can configure on, um, on the Kafka topic in, in order to uh, speed up all these kind of uh, recoveries and make things um, a little bit uh, faster. Um, <clears throat> it, these changes that also uh, can provide as a part of Kafka Streams configuration. So quickly about Kubernetes. So super cool. If you're not use, using Kubernetes uh, today, uh, probably you're going to be using this one of the Kubernetes projects one way or another by the end of the uh, 2020. It's just a, like just a rule, like yeah, the it's just a tool that uh, everyone is adopting. Uh, it helps to increase uh, developer productivity, developer velocity. So it's going to be awesome. A um, few concepts that we're going to be uh, using this uh, presentation. So Pod is a a minimal unit of uh, deployment. So we're going to be deploying our Kafka Streams application in the container that will contain, uh, in a pod that will contain multiple uh, containers. But in our case, it's just going to be one. Uh, if I wanted you to do some of the, um, let's just say, like monitoring of my application, I will can deploy another container that will uh, will have access to my Kafka Streams application. But I don't need to pollute a container of my Kafka Streams application with some of the monitoring capabilities. So concept of pod again. You can have multiple containers inside the same pod. Um, they share network, they share storage. So uh, if these containers need to interact with each other, they don't need to go through the you know sophisticated routing. So when we're talking about state and uh, in the Kafka Streams application, where by state I mean it actually requires some of the files on the file system in order to store it locally. In order to handle this in the Kubernetes world, we're using persistent volumes, and persistent volumes is a piece of uh, storage that allows us to allocate a uh, um, certain amount of uh, disk space for our application. Victor, we have uh, about uh, three minutes. Yeah, um, I four ish minutes in, in my in my watch if I that would be fine. Yeah. Probably fine. Yeah. So um the the now now I'm losing my time. Uh, <laughs> my uh, my application will be used this concept of uh, stateful set uh, if I need to deploy and make sure that particular uh, um, disk will connect will be stay for particular pod. Um, so stateful sets provides us with a stateful disk identity, stateful uh, network identity. So for uh, for Kafka streams, uh, so what we recommend. Uh, See, some people think that uh, stateful sets are more complex than deployments. Um, you can say that I, you don't need this. Um, you you can use the stateful sets to recover uh, uh, your application faster. So in this case, this state store from one pod, um, if this pod will go down, will be um, automatically reattached to another pod, uh, and you will continue where you left off. Um, if you need to just simply running uh, stream processing, which requires you just a filter and do transformation and things like that, um, you can um, forget about uh, stateful sets. If you just like need to scale in, scale down, and it's just simple filtering application, you don't need to state, you can just simply use uh, deployment. Um, or if, if you don't trust your uh, storage administrator. So essentially, um, we need to keep the change log small. Um, if you would like to use uh, uh, stateful sets, they, your recovery time will be faster. Um, use uh, anti-affinity rules also in, um, if, it's, if it's possible, if it's uh, available, um, if you have enough nodes in order to have uh, better scalability and better uh, utilization of these uh, frameworks. Um, and you can deploy actually a few pods in parallel in order to start up on Kubernetes much faster. Uh, and Kafka Streams internal will figure out uh, the order of uh, launch of certain application. Um, I will briefly go through the summary and after that I will switch to, uh, to demo. Um, so we'll have a few minutes to show you something. Um, so Kafka Streams is a, is a great uh, tool for writing um, stateful stream processing applications or um, um, data processing or event-driven microservices. Um, you can you can find some of the talks that I did in the, in the, in the past around this uh, this topic or in my YouTube channel. 
Um, and uh, Kubernetes just makes it easy for us to scale our stream processing applications. So uh, if you uh, need to deploy Kafka itself, uh, I had a set of different videos where I'm talking in this one in the very details. Um, you can find me in internet. You can definitely should check out our um, uh, community channel uh, Slack where we're talking about all things Kafka in specifically Kubernetes. I guess we just renamed this uh, Kubernetes to general container. So uh, stay tuned for, uh, for new updates. Um, once you will go there, uh, once you will go to this GitHub that I, I shared with you, you will see this um, uh, the instructions how you can run these applications. Uh, in this particular case, I am running uh, uh, this application in uh, um, in my local uh, Kubernetes uh, cluster. I do have uh, two flavors of this deployment. You also can go and check this out. Uh, one is deployment that will be using uh, no state whatsoever. So this application will be just, just run. And another uh, flavor is, um, is uh, stateful that we're using stateful set. And uh, with stateful set, I need to specify where to store uh, my data. So in this particular case, I'm using this um, a persistent volume uh, to be mounted to one of the uh, one of the application uh, places. So if I'll do um, apply this deployment, and I'll do um, I will see I'll see my uh, few applications will be running, and if I will be starting uh, generating uh, some of the load to my application, um, I should be able to see results on other side. So this is um, uh, this is where I this is where we will see will see some some of the results. And uh, I can uh, using this uh, Kubernetes uh, scale of deployment, I can go ahead and do K. Uh, scale <clears throat> uh, deployment. I can scale this up to 12. Uh, if you remember, um, I mentioned that number of uh, uh, partitions in the topic will define how many applications I can run. I created this topic in Kafka uh, that has uh, the 12, uh, 12 partitions in this particular case. So, um, but yeah, so let's. Um, Let's see how this will be running. Uh, I really encourage you to check this out and I will take a few questions uh, while we, if we have any. Well, and, I think- uh, Yeah, so like uh, you can go and follow me on Twitter. Slides will be tweeted right after this presentation. Thank you very much, Victor. That was great.